Hey everybody, it's Roxanne from Champion of My Heart, and we're going to attempt something a little different here in the coming weeks, see how it goes. I'm going to start doing some videos in supplement to the articles that are posted on our site. So today we're going to talk about when to spay or neuter your dog, and we're going to walk through, there's a veterinary journal article that came out in summer of 2020. We're going to walk through what the data says and how the answer to that question differs based on the dog's breed and sex. So I've created a little slideshow I'm going to talk you through and um, we're going to see how it goes. So thanks so much. Okay, so let's walk through uh, these slides here with the data on when, that will help you make decisions about when to spay or neuter your dog. Um, I'm new at doing this, so I'm sorry that the little live video of me maybe covering some things up, I'll make that better next time, promise. So basically, they looked at 35 different dog breeds, and in most cases, they had about 15 years of data retrospectively, um, and so they looked both by breed, and then they divided by sex, because in some cases, the recommendations they make for one um, sex or the other is different. So the truth is, is that there's no one size fits all answer to the question of when to spay or neuter. Um, researchers found major, major breed differences in vulnerabilities um, to neutering for both joint disorders and cancers. Um, what's interesting about the smaller dogs is that they didn't really find a lot of joint disorder issues um, related, associated with neutering. And in only two cases, the Boston Terrier and the Shih Tzu um, were there significant increases in cancer based on when they were neutered. And by neutering, remember, we mean, um, they mean in the paper, both male and female, even though typically consumers talk about neutering as male. Um, but just so you know, neutering means both here. So here are the 35 dog breeds um, in alphabetical order. That Sorry, West Highland White Terrier is being covered up there a little bit. But so that basically what they did is they went into their database of, of cases at the University of California Davis at the teaching hospital there. And they looked at the ones that were that occurred most frequently in the database, as well as um, they went in and selected a, a good sampling of large breed dogs and smaller breed dogs so that they had a good mix of uh, different types of dogs and sizes. So the guidelines for um, when to neuter, they, they came up with a few suggestions. And in one case, um, you know, one of the options is to leave the dog intact. And they only said that for two types of dogs. We'll talk about that here in a second. The second one, um, second option is what they call choice, which simply means that they found no increased risk for um, the joint disorders or the cancers they were considering based on when the animal was neutered. So choice just means, you know, they didn't really find any data to help you make a decision, so it's really up to you. The other option, and again, I'm sorry that my little screen here is covering it up. The, the other option is they divided some types of dogs into where they made recommendations of saying, let's not neuter them until they're over six months old. Let's not neuter them until they're over 11 months old or over 23 months old. So um, we'll show you that here in a second here. So here are the two that um, they suggest considering not altering at all throughout their lives. So that's the male Doberman Pinscher and the female Golden Retriever. Otherwise, the vast majority of dogs, and you can see in the chart here, males on the left, females on the right, um, fell into this choice category, which means it's really up to you when you want to do it. So, um, you know, 41 of the types of the dogs, 58.5%, it's really up to you that they didn't make um, a recommendation because they did not find an increased risk, depending on when you neuter. For the other dogs um, in the, gosh, maybe after six months, after 11 months, after 23 months, that represented about 38.5% of, of the types of dogs. Uh, so again, I've highlighted those here in um, different colors so that you can see them. 
The most relevant example for me, obviously, as a, a lover of Border Collies was what they had to say about my breed. And so um, the suggested timeline for both male and females is to wait to do the surgery until after their first birthday because of a significant, that's their word, significant risk of cancers if the surgery is done before that. Uh, so I included an example here. This is the little paragraph that they have in the paper on my breed. Um, and again, they have sections like this for all the breeds that they consider. Um, so, so you can look at what's most relevant for you. But this is the example for my girls. And they were, um, Clover was new to her, had her surgery um, when she was about 17 months old. And Tori, it was right before her first birthday. So right around 11 months old or so. Um, we had Tori Spade. The other thing you can access in addition to the full article, if you if you want to read the whole thing, and I encourage you to, um, you know, always go to primary sources when they're available. Yeah, so you can read the full article, you can download it. Um, I'll include links for how to do all that um, down below. And then you can also download supplemental materials. And that's where you find really the details where they looked at these associated risks for joint issues such as hip dysplasia, um, cranial cruciate ligament rupture, which is a knee injury, and um, elbow dysplasia. Then the cancers that they looked at were um, lymphoma, which is a blood cancer, um, mast cell tumors, which often manifest as um, tumors that, like on the skin, like lumps and bumps that you can actually physically see, um, hemangiosarcoma, which is um, a really horrible uh, form of cancer, I, and I feel bad, you know, we, we lost one of our yellow labs many years ago to it, but hemangiosarcoma um, often starts in the spleen and spreads. Um, it can also form near the heart, so in, in blood-rich environments. Um, and then the other cancer they looked at was osteosarcoma, which um, is bone cancer. So I'm going to go off, I'm, I'm done talking about the article here, I want to talk a little bit of commentary, so to speak, on trends that I see and then my own personal experience. But I want to be clear that um, shelters and rescues are going to be different, and in many cases you're not going to have a choice of when to spay or neuter. In many cases that's going to be done before you even adopt them, um, and that's because shelters and rescue groups have very different responsibilities and goals, even in the veterinary medical space. Um, that are different from those of us that are just, you know, individual dog-loving families. Um, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Early spay-neuter, when it's done in the shelter environment, is done very young for very specific reasons, and I, I truly don't see that changing widely anytime soon. Um, as an example here, I included photos of one of our um, 2020 foster puppies. This is little baby Velvet, who stayed with us for a few weeks until she was old enough to be adopted. Um, and she indeed was spayed at eight weeks old and then adopted soon after that. So we hope she's doing well. She was a very sweet puppy. The trends I see in my own circle of friends are, um, I, do, I do know a lot of people who are leaving their male dogs intact for life because they see no medical benefit of doing the surgery. Others are doing a vasectomy instead. Uh, that, that's becoming increasingly popular in certain segments of the dog living community. Uh, and certainly in my group of friends, a lot of people are letting female dogs go through at least one heat cycle before doing the space surgery. Um, some do a couple of cycles. Um, I personally did one. The girls each um, had one heat cycle before they were spayed uh, because I felt like it was um, best for their long-term health. So. Um, so those are trends that I'm seeing that are not necessarily addressed in this paper, but I wanted to share that. Now, for me, I would never not, double negative, I would never not spay a female dog um, because of, well, obviously, you know, don't want any unwanted pregnancies or, you know, proliferation of puppies, but also the risk of mammary cancer, basically breast cancer in dogs, which is very deadly. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to um, have to deal with that or have my dogs go through that because it's not pretty. Um, and there's also a risk of something called pyometra, which is a life-threatening uterine infection. And um, it is an emergency. It is really dangerous and you definitely don't want to go through that either. Now, from personal experience, I can tell you um, that neutering uh, too early does have consequences. This is Ginkgo, who has now since been gone uh, many years now. But 
he was neutered when he was six months old because at the time that's what people told you to do you neuter them at six months old of course you do so we did and when he was three years old he blew both of his knees he suffered that cranial cruciate ligament injury that we discussed earlier um, and required a fairly complicated surgery called a tplo on both of his knees so we did those surgeries about three months apart between his third and his fourth birthday um, and while it's certainly doable and the physical therapy after afterwards is doable and his needs served him well he lived to be um, four months shy of his 16th birthday which is incredible for a large breed dog we think he was lab greyhound mix um, but he did blow his knees at the age of three and i do believe it was because we neutered him too young so um, that's not something i want to go through again or feel responsible for so that's everything I can think of to say today. So thank you so much. If you found this helpful, I would appreciate a subscribe. Uh, we're gonna look at doing more videos like this on dog and veterinary topics uh, that you might find useful and helpful to your life with your sweeties. Um, so thanks again, and um, we'll see you next time. Take care.